Hey, welcome to Geek Aid. This is the show where three of the world's top, most smartest experts educate you on the happenings of the world and answer your gaming and nerd culture questions. My name's Saucy Mailman, and just so you all know, I have a PhD in peanut butter psychology and physics. <laughs> in psychology and physics. Yeah. Okay. Who else do we have here? Uh, I have my buddy Geeks. Hey guys, my name is Geeksay. Uh, you might also know me as I'm credited by many, many professors in Canada to be the one that actually, you know, founded maple syrup. You're welcome, world yep. and pancakes. And then we have Rod Johnston here. My name is Rod, and I am a wild <laughs> otter ang wrangler. I can't talk, apparently, so. But yes, I'm a wild otter <laughs> Wrangler. It's it's like a tongue twister. I know. Wild otter wrangler. I, I wanted to say I, rotter angler. I didn't even realize when I was writing it down how much of a tongue twister it was, but it is indeed. I am a wild otter wrangler. Yes. Yeah. How long have you been doing that for? Like, just curious. Thirty nine years. No, I mean, how many times have you uh, been saying it in the mirror today? I am a wild <laughs> otter wrangler. I am. A, I'm. My name's Rod. I uh, no. Your name isn't Rod. Your name is Geeksay. My name is Rod. I <laughs> wrangle wild otters every day. That's what I do. I've been doing it for 39 years, even though I'm 34 years old. It is, uh, it's just how I do things. So. Yeah, and next week we'll talk about how he's also a time traveler. <laughs> yeah. I, am, I am Marty McFly. That's what I am. Very fly. Bad movie. Well, guys, Bad movie. <laughs> welcome, welcome to our show. So this is the first episode, uh, either episode zero or one. I don't know, one of those. First episode of the show we're going to do called Geek Aid. And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about news happening in the world, uh, anything nerdy, uh, gaming related, stuff like that. Um, give our opinions, which are the correct opinions, so you don't have to worry about any other opinions out there. Um, because as we talked about, you know, we are experts in our fields. And then also we're going to answer uh, questions you guys send in, questions you have. Um, just very, you know, we're here. We're here to give advice, and we're here to help you out in your life. With as as much combined knowledge and experience as there is on this uh, show, we should be able to solve world hunger and make all the bad things like Donald Trump go away. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, we could we could do things like solve world hunger if we wanted to, but we have way more important things to talk about than that. Yep, this is true. I mean, we have to decide who and why, what fictional character's death has affected us the most. I mean, that's the kind of Don't thing that is... Don't spoil it. Don't spoil I mean, yeah, this. We haven't said spoiler alerts yet. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Right, do, do you guys want to talk about the news? Let's, yes. Let's, let's just jump right into the news, guys. Let's do this. All right, cool. So we have here first. Um, do you want to talk about this one, Geeks? Uh, yeah, you know, this is something that I think uh, affects uh, the three of us because we all do do Twitch. Do do, I said. Uh, so uh, lately, there's been a lot of bans happening for people saying some slurs, some bad words. And, you know, there's always two different camps to this. I know, uh, I'm sure you guys know, there's always the camp that seems like they're under 13 saying it's okay to say the F word. And, and I'm not talking, you know, you know, effing. You're not a. talking I'm, I'm talking, talking about the word fuck you're talking no. about. Oh, Jesus. It hurts my ears. <laughs> um, yeah, like, dude, I can get banned in Canada. My passport can get revoked for saying that yeah. stuff. Anyways, so there's a lot of Twitch streamers we were looking at this that are saying, um, you know, um, some bad words. Um, and they're more slurs than just saying a swear. And, you know, I thought this was really interesting because we do have someone here that you know, it kind of affects more or would understand more. We have someone here that is actually gay. Um, so, Rod, how... Yeah. how I'm just kidding. My, man, my, my, my wife is going to be, like, devastated that, like, you guys have, like, 
brought me out of the closet live on the air. Oh, um, you haven't talked to her about that yet? I, I haven't. She doesn't know, guys. Um, oh, man. It's so, going so to be... It'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll affect our relationship I, I, I just in a very be, unhealthy way. <laughs> I want to be honest. Uh, Saucy is uh, gay. So yeah. I thought this was really interesting because uh, a lot of the slurs are homophobic. You know, oh, and I wanted to kind of get your perspective on this. I wanted to get to know how you feel about this. I think, I, like, so basically we're talking about the, an article that came out. There's a, been a whole bunch of Twitch streamers that have been banned for racist comments, homophobic slurs, etc. cetera. Um, for me, like, I, I, I'm a comedian. I make jokes about things. So for me, it doesn't affect a whole lot. But, like, I know a lot of people out there that, you know, stream on Twitch or YouTube or whatever, um, and then, you know, people come in, say homophobic things, make them feel bad. And like that kind of stuff can really, you know, affect you in a negative way. Have like, it'll really affect your stream, make you upset and stuff. So I think it's cool to see, you know, all the big platforms out there kind of starting to realize that racism, homophobia, all that kind of stuff shouldn't be a part of this culture. And it's kind of cool to see people cracking down on that sort of thing. So I think that something that's really important here is that when streamers allow this kind of stuff to be tolerated in their chats, it amplifies what's happening because then like everyone in the, the community there is going to think it's okay and acceptable to do this kind of stuff. So how you stop this or try to stop this from happening is not allowing the Twitch streamers to be the figureheads in this whole situation you don't let them get away with doing this kind of stuff this bad behavior this uh stuff that just we don't want as part of our community and when you get rid of them for doing this and punish them for being assholes it makes twitch and the world we live in often a better place because when this like so much of the twitch community is younger kids right especially we have Fortnite being here and so many kids are just completely in love with and obsessed with Fortnite. so they watch streamers they do all this stuff if you have these people kicked and banned and punished for using this kind of language hopefully it's going to stop it from spreading a little bit and yeah. make it twitch and just online in general a, a better place for people it's 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 funny because I always say this to people like, if you let this stuff happen in your community in Twitch, you're gonna get more of them, right? So if yep. you want a, a memey community that's all about memes and like just goofing off, then you're gonna get that community. And if you start letting things slide, you know, like slurs and stuff, people are gonna feel comfortable, feel like they can say it. I don't even like to talk politics in my stream because no. I think I, I think it just opens a can of worms and you don't know um, everyone and their beliefs in your stream, right? Like if yeah. someone truly believes in, say, President Trump, that's their view. I don't, I don't want Twitch to be the place to be where we're going to try to debate this. You know, we're here mm -hmm. just to have a good time, have fun. And I want... You know, personally, I want the stream and ever on the community to be like where that kind of stuff doesn't matter. We're all the same and we're all friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. The views and stuff just don't matter. It's Twitch is supposed to be a place where you're allowed to hang out with people and have fun, like doing something you enjoy. And if if you can't go in there without being attacked and having these things said that just doesn't like you don't enjoy, you don't like or hurts you it's it's not a good place for you anymore and just kind of keep that stuff away and keep away from these toxic communities kind of forming hopefully yeah exactly i actually got into this conversation with someone a couple days ago um they were just asking me like they're starting streaming whatever and they wanted to know like how i handle banning people and i don't really ban many people like when someone comes in if they say dumb stuff then i'll just i'll just give it back and we'll all just make fun of them and we'll have a good time with trolls because i think it's hilarious but like the only things that i actually ban people for is when they come in saying racial slurs or just hateful speech in general i don't care yeah. if it's like chauvinistic if it's racist whatever like i just don't I don't tolerate that sort of thing. So yeah. I think it's good. There's some people who are afraid, like like you were saying, geeks say like, 
people that are afraid, like if I kick this guy out, that's a viewer, so they don't moderate themselves as much. So I yeah. think sometimes the platforms themselves, whether it be Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, whatever, whatever your platform is, like that they kind of take a stand for, especially for these bigger people who are anyone, we're all role models for people out there. And especially the bigger you are as a streamer, you are a role model. And if you're out there saying this stuff, it's these the platform heads need to kind of come down and throw down the ban hammer on them, you know? How how do you feel, Saucy? Though um, you know, I don't want to keep saying this, but you are uh, gay. So yeah, how do you feel about people saying, you know, me using the f word, me using the word gay? Um, you know, I'm not saying it hateful wise, so it should be okay. Like uh, honestly, how do how, what do you think of when people say that? It's, I don't know. For me, like I, I had this conversation like with Rod a while back. <clears throat> we grew up with just like these kind of words, like it's not okay, but just like, it's never really been offensive towards me, I guess. Just like my grow up, my upbringing, just kind of where I'm from. So I've never been offended by the words themselves when you're just using them as words. It's when you're like actually using them in a hateful meaning. Like I, I'm always, I've always been words, th the power behind a word is the way that you're using it. So, you know, when people say, oh, I didn't say bitch, I said betch. It's like, that's it's the it's the meaning behind it you know so there's yeah. always those kids like oh i didn't say this word i said a word that has one letter difference so it's never offended me but also i'm you know i'm kind of just more thick-skinned and like i i don't let things like that affect me but i do know a lot of people like words like that are super hurtful and like could really really affect people so i, I don't think there's there's really no place in our society for any racial slurs like that and any like any words like that, you know, I just don't think that they should be in our vocabularies anymore. And I'm super guilty of it. Like I'll say, I'll say dumb stuff that I shouldn't all the time, but not in like a public forum, you know? Yeah. It's when you're, you're putting yourself out there, you're doing things like podcasts, you're streaming, you're doing all this stuff. You kind of have to be extra careful with how and how you're putting things and saying things and just making sure that you're, putting yourself out there in a positive light and the people yeah. out there dropping these things and saying these things aren't doing that they're putting their they're saying stuff and making people think that it's okay to say this kind of stuff and we're kind of we've been moving away from that as a society now for years which is good i i think that it is a positive thing i think we have to be careful i think we can't like start you know putting people out and like execute him for saying this kind of stuff but making him know that it's like we don't want this stuff around i think makes it so you kind of put a little bit of a stop to it so yeah i'm not gonna I lie think this... I, ju I just spilled coffee all over my desk <laughs> like, <laughs> oh no yeah i was... just clean it up oh I'm, I'm cleaning it up but Perfect. You know, speaking of spills, this spills into another story, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> Best segue. Love it. Uh, love it. So, oh. you know, in the next news story, guys, we're going to transition here in, you know, speaking of hate speech, especially in gaming community, um, Rainbow Six is taking actually a really big stance against this, and I'm really, really happy. And it's actually making me kind of feel like I should play Rainbow Six now. I know right? my, my boy Wookie is actually a huge fan of this game, um, and he always tries to get me to play it, and I'm kind of hemming and hawing. But now I'm kind of like, yeah, I like this. If you guys, so if you guys don't know, so if you say a slur in chat, you're automatically banned for 30 minutes. Your first offense, your second offense is one hour, uh, your third offense is two hours, and I, I forget what it says for your fourth offense. It says, You're an asshole, I think is what it says. Oh, and then <laughs> further offenses get an investigation on the account, which could lead to a permanent ban. So, now, obviously, people... Oh, sorry. You go. You go. I was just going to say, I was going to say, so it, in a world that we're talking about, like our last story, people getting banned from saying these terms... It would be preferential that we didn't have to worry about this stuff, right? That we didn't have right. to play these games and then go, hey, um, could you stop saying this stuff? Right. But it doesn't exactly work like that. I, I spent a lot of time in the Overwatch community, and they have report functions in that game also, but it doesn't auto-do it like Rainbow Six here. Um, that can take a while, and it kind of doesn't always make it easy to uh -huh. you know, get these things issued or dealt with right away 
but anything that's sitting there and is is stopping you from sitting in there and typing these words out and and messing with people i think is a positive i mean it's yeah. kind of the same as the last subject right so i think isn't it so i've played a little bit of overwatch i mean just not not to humble brag but i've never lost a game ever in overwatch <laughs> uh, but uh they do it pretty good where like if you if you say something like assholeish where you say like gg or like well i don't know what it does but like they'll replace what you say with something like hey i think you all did great or like when oh you're really being hateful. don't they that. do that that's awesome. no, that. no they that's do not yes they do it's not an it's, Overwatch. They don't do it's that. It definitely is because my my homie was like, uh, I would just said, I think it's if you say like GG or something to the enemy team, like it replaces what you say to the enemy team. Really? Yeah, yeah I, it was. Is they do something like that where they have a filter where when you say something stupid, it like just changes what you say. But I think it's kind of cool if you just say something blatantly racist, if it just bans you. You're just like, nope, you're out. Yeah, it's, it it's is. What, uh, go ahead. Please. Oh, sorry. It's it's one of those things where you know. I always thought it was so stupid that you would have to put Twitch rules in your chat. Like, don't be racist. Don't be homophobic. Like, it, like that shouldn't exist, right? But um, this is taking it to the next level, which I love. Like, I wish there was a fill. Like, and there is. There is, sorry, for Twitch. I have it on. Where if you say, you know, say the homophobic slur, for uh, the F word, you know, right away you're banned. Or you're just like, you know, it's not, the message is right away deleted, right? And that's what this pretty much is. It's just a, a really good filter for Rainbow Six Siege. And that's unreal. Yeah, it's saying it, they call it a toxicity filter, right? And they say uh, they said one redditor went in and typed a slur, got ejected from the match, and received a ban. So this isn't like this isn't that's what I was trying to compare it to Overwatch. Overwatch, like people can report you, uh, but they don't go actively looking for it. So, but this is like this is auto. So you go type in one of these words that they have out, you know, outlined, and you are gone, which is which is really cool because it just stops that stuff from like, because you, you're in a lobby like this and you're playing a game like this. You're just going to like make everyone angry and upset and hurt people's feelings, which is not necessary, man. You're playing a game. You're supposed to be having fun. You know, I think we see it a lot, especially in like shooters, like, any yeah. competitive shooter, you see a lot of it. And I was right. I looked it up. If you type GG easy, they replace stuff with G whiz. That was fun. Good playing. Or I feel <laughs> very, very small. Please hold me. So they just change what you say. I have never even seen this. And I play a lot of Overwatch. I Maybe I, I don't think people type it anymore. That's why. Yeah. it's. I, I'm sure it's been around for a while, but I, I remember I'm, seeing it before. Yeah. Imagine you can type in, in Hearthstone. Imagine oh, that'd be you. terrible. That would be the worst thing. That would be some next level mind game stuff, man. That would be yeah. intense. Like, imagine typing, being like, "Play that psychic scream." I know you have it. <laughs> like, you I know, know come I mean? on, like, do it. It's do almost it. like magic level stuff. Like, saucy. Yeah. I remember you telling me, saucy, how the mind games in real life magic happen. Yeah. And that would be kind of you know next level stuff. But I, th yeah. I think that would be really funny. But so yeah. It's it's amazing that these companies are doing this and pushing it because I think it, it you have the less of this is happening in your communities there will be people who go into these games and play it once and see this kind of crap and never come back yeah. which is what they're trying to prevent there are I mean one of the bigger things is I know in Overwatch and I'm ass I'm assuming this is in most games that like when women play these games that they're, they're often don't want to go on comms because yeah. of people saying awful crap. Yeah. And so the fact that they're trying to get this out and getting it like removed is amazing. And just again, they're, you're cutting the, the head off a snake. You're stopping it before it becomes like, like just out of control. Yeah. Not that it's not out of control in a lot of places anyways. So, Okay, I want to think. So I was in a a female Twitch streamer's stream yesterday. Some guy comes in and starts saying how he wants to do all these sexually explicit things to her. With like, that was the first things he's saying in the chat. Of so course. he's he's coming in and just saying this terrible crap, and you just go, "Why? It, it, this isn't necessary. This yeah, isn't like." What's like wrong with you? <laughs> so I mean, it was probably a twelve year old, right? That's like the the distinction, or like you know, some younger kid. It's you know from the fact that someone comes in and says this crap that they're probably a kid, but like even then you don't know that for sure. And just yeah. getting rid of it 
makes it way easier to deal with. So. so I have a question I want to propose to you, gentlemen. Being that we are all experts, what are some words that you would want to see immediately either banned or replaced with something? What do you think would be some good oh. stuff? I have an example. I have a good one. I'm sick of every time I'm playing uh, Overwatch, people always typing in the word sarcophagus. Just super <laughs> offensive. And I think that that should merit like a 30-minute ban. What do you guys think? I think the term uh, peanut butter should never be used again because I, mean, I think, it, I mean, it's usually sexually explicit and tied to dogs. And I, I don't I don't know what's happening at this point. I, Side. <laughs> the only game I really play a lot of is Hearthstone. And when people spam well played, I really hate it. And Jesus. I'm proposing we just say, good job, eh? Yeah. You know, every time like you play it. well, good job, eh? Oh, you're so good special. Job. Special, eh? You're special, eh? Oh, that play was real good. <laughs> <laughs> you're number one in my books and in my heart. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. But speaking of yeah. Hearthstone, guys, speaking of Hearthstone card games, I think our next news story, this fits in really well with it. Um, Binding of Isaac, if you guys don't know that popular game, have you guys ever played Binding of Isaac? Yeah, played Basically, a bunch of it. Uh, yeah. I, uh, like, they offered it on PS like uh, Plus one month for free, and I played it a little bit. It, it, like, I love roguelike games, and it's not really yeah. considered a roguelike, though, but it kind of is in that kind of vein where you kind of learn everything. But anyways, guys, so the developers, the creators, have just put up a Kickstarter for a new card game that they want to make, an yep. IRL card game. So Which this, I could eventually see it coming to virtual then, right? Don't you think? Yeah, possible, probably. Yeah. I, I, my favorite part of this whole whole article is the the one of the guys in the video goes, the card game is incredibly similar to the video game, except it doesn't play like it at all. <laughs> Which is the most insane statement I think anyone has ever made in all of like time and space. It's just like, it's like me going, "Hey, Saucy, you're." You're extremely similar to Shaquille O'Neal, except short and not good at basketball. Yeah, like, <laughs> you're the exact same, except completely different. <laughs> I think one of the coolest things, so this, uh, the it's called The Binding of Isaac Four Souls. It's a card game coming out. But what's crazy about it is, so they raised the money on Kickstarter for it, yeah. and they had they originally had a $50,000 goal, and they raised that within like a day or something, I think they said? Two hours. First two, two hours. hours. Two hours. First two hours, yeah. And, they're currently they have like 11 days to go they're at 1.3 million of their goal you know 1.7 1.7 million they is pledged i find it super impressive that a game that has four sperm and their logo is 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 much (laughs) right (laughs) look at the logo yeah no you're not wrong they're ghosts they're ghosts they're they're spooky ghosts (laughs) yeah absolutely if you look at the stretch goals, I'm sure that they're ghosts. <laughs> I want to see that, what the top tier is. Hold on. The, uh, all the guys, all the guys, mystery box. all the guys that developed this game are splooging in their pants when you're giving them money. To this it's insane. Like, uh, hold on. I think it's cool. Pl- pledge eleven hundred dollars, and you get a mystery box, and the box contains a lot of shit. Like, yeah. Ho. Oh, if if I'm giving you eleven hundred dollars for a video game or card game, I better have my name in the frigging instruction now, manual. This for is that way game. better. This will this will get you on it. So in part of the mystery box, you get two to three resin poop magnets. I'm sold. I'm pledging eleven hundred dollars right now. Hold on. Why? Why? Why would you want a password here and pledge? I'm sh- pretty sure I can get a poop magnet. For less than eleven hundred dollars. No, even... you're wrong. Wait, there, there's this. Okay, so the eleven hundred dollar one, guys, is sold out. There's only twenty of them. They sold out. Because I just bought the last one. <laughs> and there's also a sixteen hundred dollar one. And what? there's only ten available. And it's free shipping in the U.S. Just to let you guys know. I mean, free shipping, sixteen hundred dollars. I mean, you got me sold on that. <laughs> yeah, it's worth the sixteen hundred bucks. Man. I. So I know that like when people like kickstart movies and stuff that you often get like producer credits, but that is so much money. And I've also heard of games doing profit sharing, right? There are like, I don't think Kickstarter does it, but I think there are other like 
types that's kind of, but that's you know what the i'm pretty sure what i've heard is it's not good that that profit sharing stuff because you have to like you have to show you have like unreal amount of money you have to show you have over like five hundred thousand in your bank account before you even can even touch it and like uh, apparently people that have been doing it just have been getting burned by it really i mean so it's like yeah. a pyramid scheme it's not a pyramid scheme as much as like you think you're gonna get all this money back on this game but you're not you know like yep. it's gonna take years upon years upon years if at all right so kickstarting when it comes like i feel like board games have been one of the 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 bigger realms for like kickstarter like i i know i've had friends who have bought lots of board games from kickstarter but i don't know how many other things are like super successful from kickstarter right i i know there's other things like people write books and i mean you could do anything right from kickstarter but I've seen it happen with a lot of bands, like to fund their albums. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, if you guys want to check it out, I'm actually, I just uh, started a Kickstarter, and okay. I'm trying to do cryptocurrency called uh, Maple Syrup Loonies. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be the next Bitcoin. Jump on it now, you guys. I'm telling you right now, jump on it now. Yeah. Maple Syrup Loonies. <laughs> We have some pretty good stretch goals for it because Geeks A and I have been working on this for a while now. Yeah. Um, you can pledge as, as little as a dollar. You get nothing for that. Um, the coins, they're starting at, what, $10 each now? Yeah, yeah, they're get, worth $10. We're, we're inflating it right away. Like, we want to make oh, yeah. it, like, you want to make that Bitcoin kind of currency. You want to show that it's strong right over the yeah. get-go. Yeah. That $10. Does, yeah. I mean, I don't know how you could turn down this, this uh, sales pitch. I mean, having something named after the two biggest things in canada maple yeah. syrup and whatever the other Loonies. word you were saying Looney. i don't that's even know that's the name of money yeah that's is that like it's their penny it's like a dollar it's a dollar god you canadians are freaking weird man <laughs> listen listen just to let you know uh, i know we do have to pay for our pod bean subscription and stuff so that, you know saucy and i did send you actually four maple leaf loonies instead of the money okay yeah so just hold down your bank account and let it happen. All in. Back to our I, back to our hate speech. I want anytime someone types in Canadians are freaking weird. I want it to ban them from our podcast. <laughs> well, then I I would be banned from all things that I appear in or around Geek Say. As I said, as I appear in Geek Say, which I think sounds kind of creepy. I, I, th I think my favorite ongoing joke with Rod and Saucy is how things just came to Canada. Like yes. Aqua, Barbie Girl is hot right now. That that yeah. whole album is unreal. That was the, that was the joke yesterday. I think yeah. the we one today we were, we're getting set, so good. We we're getting things set up, and we we're like, uh, Geeks A was setting things up for the for the recording, and we're like, yeah, they just got OBS in Canada, like <laughs> just this last week. So it's a new thing. Hey, so hey, good. Have you guys, have you guys uh, uh, Geeks just told me about this great rapper yeah. you just heard about? His name is Drake. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with Biggie. It would have been funny if you said Biggie or Tupac. I know. What do you mean Tupac's dead? <laughs> Tupac? He, uh, He's not coming on and... tour? What the heck? He's supposed to be we, in we Toronto in next week. <laughs> All right. So I have. A, I want to propose another question. I, I'm here to propose questions. It's part of my PhD. So we have Binding of Isaac coming as a card game. What do you guys think would be so it can't be like a card game already? So we can't say Hearthstone; okay. that doesn't okay. count. Yeah, yeah. What do you, What would you like to see something that's not anything like a board game or card game coming out as a board game you could play? What do you think would be really fun? Oh, that's a that's a that's a toughie, eh? Um, you go first, Rod. How about Mario Golf? Okay. <laughs> oh that's wow, dope. that's that sounds <laughs> awesome. So. Mario Mario's has all kinds of sports games, right? Like he yeah. plays tennis, he, he drives uh, carts, he does those carts. So if you make Mario Golf a card game, it would be extreme. I mean, be awesome. I think you could have drinking games associated with it, yeah. with it even though Nintendo would never uh, endorse such things because they're like Nintendo. Like Mario Kart drunk driving, but in card <laughs> Mario Kart <laughs> what no no what no. is that oh so you play a game of mario kart with your friends but you start each like lap each like round with a beer and you have to finish your beer before the the race is over or else it doesn't count <laughs> oh that sounds awful it's real great oh. sometimes 
some people play like when you get hit by a power up or something like there's a bunch of rules to it but like you have to pull over and like finish your beer before you go and like there's a bunch of stuff it's fun so i've never drank in my life though i've only heard about that i have permanent suntan marks on my shoulders because of a game called keg ball um keg ball is like kickball but you you have to have a beer in your hands at all times yeah and when you're running the bases you have to finish your beer before you get to home plate. Okay. So like, and then like you have to put it over your head and like, oh, to prove you drank it all. So we did this one year on the fourth of July, and I got really, really, really drunk, and I took off my t-shirt and I had a, a, a wife beater on underneath it, and I hadn't put sunscreen on like my ever on yeah. my chest, like in my shoulders, and so I burnt a permanent wife beater into my body so i am as pale as they come and i am wait you you don't look that pale dude you look like you're tanned all the time all year round that's color correction (laughs) that's color correction that's that's really bad we fix it in post (laughs) have you guys ever heard of uh, heard of a game called beersby no so beersby is a game we play here i've never heard of it until i moved to the west coast we're just we're just speaking of beer games but you can play this with a pop can too so it's called Popsy, I don't know. Anyways, yeah, Beersby. So you need two stakes. You smash them into the ground, and then okay. you put uh, two beer cans on either end, empty. And okay. the goal is: so if you you hit the you throw the frisbee, and if it knocks the beer off, like clean, you can't catch it. Okay. okay. But if you hit the post, you can catch it as it falls. But if it t- lands on the ground, you get a, the other team gets a point, and you have to take a drink. And it's okay. it's it's ridiculous how like to play it. It's that really fun. Even, yeah, it does is. Does Canada not not have cornhole or like beer pong or any of the simple no, drinking games? We do, but like we, we like to play hardcore games. Like our beer is hardcore, right? We don't have like oh yeah, get me some of that Coors Light. You don't hear that. I mean, yeah. now we Mols- we perfected drinking games in Canada. Yeah, I mean. I know you guys have Molson Triple X, which has knocked me on my ass more than once in my life. I've never even drank that. No, <laughs> it's, it's gross. It. But that was back in college. It's like Wildcat, <laughs> like Black Ice, Molson it's Black like, Ice, or it's Wildcat, like, uh, like malt liquor. Oh, oh. Yeah. talk it's about so... being extremely, extremely drunk. So this is—I was thinking about this. This isn't related to drinking. Um, so I want to propose this. So you know how the trend right now in all of gaming is every single game's coming out with a battle royale game. Yep. So we got like My Little Pony battle royale. We've got like, what do we have? Monopoly battle royale, Uno battle royale. What if we had the opposite where all the battle royale games had to make tabletop board games or card games? Like we have Realm Royale, the card game. How well do you think that would do? Um, it would be since... fun because it would be a big group, right? Don't you yeah, think? Yeah, you'd have to, minimum of 40 players. You all have to be together in the same spot. But I don't know how you would ever get that many people together. I think it getting be, a... It would be like a bar game. Like you go to yeah. a bar, like trivia night, and you all can play it. You all play Realm Royale, the card game. That yeah. sounds awful. I what? mean... Yeah, that sounds you awful. Get... Awesome. That sounds awful. Have awesome. you ever... W-F-U-L. Ron, have awful. you ever played any like real big... So like Werewolf or something, you can play with up to 100 people? No. We've had it where we've had like 35, 40 people all playing. Like it's so much fun. I've played You're a Spy game, that one, um, where you... It's like Werewolf, but you have two people and they're like spies and they're trying to like sabotage shit. <laughs> I forget That's what the hell it's called. People. That's not 40 people. That's not 40 people. I know. it's like, That one's like eight people or nine people or something like that, but it's the same kind of concept. Oh, the the Resistance? <laughs> yeah, Resistance and You're a Spy. <laughs> that's, what, that's all we ever did whenever we played that game. We would just yell, you're a spy at each other. So, yeah. I love games like that. It's It's just, it requires so much coordination and... If you're at a bar, like someone's going to just get really wasted and start throwing paymakers because they didn't like you accusing them of. <laughs> of I, don't, I don't see how this is any different than playing PUBG. I mean, because in PUBG, you can't like punch somebody in the taint when they piss you off. I do that all the time. <laughs> you can punch them in the taint. <laughs> yeah, no, it's confirmed. I mean, I, I know in the war, in like in the loading screen, you could do all this shenanigans, but. Okay. let's move okay. on to questions guys all right so we so this is 
uh, half half of this podcast, or maybe even like a larger number than 50%, one thing we really want to focus on is we want to be here for advice for all of you, for the listeners out there. Because because we've spent many years perfecting our peanut butter psychology, our auto wrangling, uh, discovering maple syrup, stuff like that. We are experts in our field. We've, we've devoted a vast majority of our life to learning a lot so you guys don't have to. So in the future, we're going to want you guys to send us questions because we can answer pretty much anything if it's related to anything nerdy, gaming related, so even stuff that's close to that, whatever, we can we can solve your problems. But since this is the first time we've done this, this is episode one, episode zero to one, um, we had to scour the internet to find some questions. <laughs> we figured we would just go out there, just kind of dump our knowledge out of anything important. So we're going to help some people out. Yes, we are spreading. We are not ones to like, like hoard our knowledge we are of the people where we shall share with all of you yeah what's geek say what's our first question that we're gonna we're gonna help solve people so the first question's based on roblox do you or robo blocks or roblox i don't know how to even say the word how do you say it i would say roblox roblox, roblox? Uh, let's just we've determined it's now roblox if okay it wasn't so roblox before, yeah <laughs> so the question guys that we got from the internet and like they said, we don't want to do this, but right now it's episode one. Uh, I'm so embarrassed. I play Roblox because it's a little kid's game and people make fun of me. Um, no. Or make fun of the game. Sorry. Yeah, there you go. My sister told her guy friend who's in my sports team, and I'm so <laughs> nervous. He's going to tell everyone in my team and I'll get bullied. So video games are a thing where you're supposed to be having fun. If you have fun with Roblox... <laughs> I love how Saucy's already like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I mean, if video games were a thing that you played to have fun, none of us would play Hearthstone. I mean, <laughs> okay, so there's a slight difference between having fun with the game and having anger issues like I have. I mean, I could have lots of fun. With, I mean, I love the Dark Souls games, and they drive me freaking bonkers. So... I'm not going to say that I've never played a game that wasn't frustrating. I think that if you're having fun with a game like Roblox, you should just have fun with it. Because anyone on your sports club team game that makes fun of you for this is kind of an asshole anyways. So you play your Roblox kid. You have fun with it. So I'm thinking. I have some advice. So here's what you do. So you spend the next couple years devoting your attention, your energy, learn how to become a cyber hacker. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take some ethical hacking courses, some black hat hacking courses, and what you do, you just dig up as much dirt as you can on these kids on your sports team, and be like, listen, you wanna talk shit about me playing Roblox? Here's some pictures I dug up on your hard drive. And they'd be like, oh, wait, no. And you know what? You just do that. Like, I think that's the solution to your problem that you have here. So Saucy's mailman's uh, solution is commit a felony. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I said I have pickle hacking for you. You can take those at any university. You can take those online. Yeah. You can, you can, but the second you get into someone's hard drive, you're committing a felony. You just don't get caught. <laughs> allegedly into a hard drive. Yeah. Let's not say you we're just, getting in. Here's some stuff I allegedly found on your, allegedly on your hard drive. I don't know. It, maybe you should have had a more secure drive. It, just, it was just there for the for the picking. I mean, when your password is one, two, three, four, five, it is secure, right? Oh shit, be right back, guys. I gotta change my password here. <laughs> you not you right. guys know how uh Ninja started playing Halo? No, like, how did he no, no, I mean, they, I'm they, saying, oh, you know, yeah, 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 you know how he started playing Halo, and now he's yeah. the biggest Fortnite streamer ever, or uh, streamer ever. $500,000 yeah. $500, so, a month. Twitch. You know, what I think this guy should do here is quit the sports team, really yeah. focus in Roblox, and then eventually he'll switch into another game, use all that knowledge, all that Twitch skills yeah. into a new game, become the best, go back to every single one of them, knock on the door. And then, you know, say how you like me now. Just pull up in your fucking Ferrari. Be like, hey, Dude. hey, what's up? Oh, you're still you're still playing. What what mm -hmm. sports team do you think he's on? Uh, Ooh, it's got to be it's, it's got to be the chess team. <laughs> OK, so you kids are still playing chess. Hey, how many Ferraris have you gotten? Because I have three. 
And then you just like stare them down. Imagine and then just... having a Ferrari out... with Roblox all over it. Like that's like the <laughs> graphics all over it. It's like Dead Mouse has the the toaster cat, yeah. the neon one. And then you just go. You have to do a burnout in their rose bushes though. Uh, and then then you just take off. And then yeah. you get you flip on the bird and scream Roblox as you leave. It'd be way better <laughs> if like you did that and you were trying to do a road burn, road burn, burnout, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> And you accidentally drive through their like living room wall, like you know when those old people accident, like that lady you saw yesterday, Saucy, who thought she was in reverse and hit a curb, and you accidentally put your Ferrari through their living room. <laughs> and you can afford to buy, and then you rub it in their face more, be like, I don't even care. I can afford to buy three of your houses. Here, have one on me, Roblox. You go Roblox. <laughs> Roblox. <laughs> you who start spending every it? cent as Who develops Roblox? Uh, I don't know. Should I mean, we, that's... Uh, it must be a multiplayer game, and I think, guys, if you don't know, we are planning to do a multi-stream of Roblox soon. Yeah, I think it it's an is, MMO, right? Developer is by Roblox Corporation. Okay. So, man, if I was, like, the Lego company, I would sue the ever-living shit out of these people. They are the <laughs> most generic Legos I have ever seen. They're even like yellow guys, except instead of like their flat top heads, they have like rounded heads. But they're just like that, that's how you get away from with shit, dude. Yeah, I mean, here's okay. Here's some more advice that doesn't involve committing alleged felonies. So what you do, you just become like the Lord of Roblox, and you go to your school. Uh, you said you're on a sports team. I'm assuming you might be in school. I don't know. I'm making this up. So you just go from now on. You wear like the Roblox shirt. You bring the Roblox like lunch bag. You got. You have to get Velcro shoes that got Roblox on them. Like you get a Roblox skateboard. Uh, you get everything, and then people are like. Wait, what's going on? You're like, dude, obviously, like, Roblox is the new shit. Like, are you not part of Roblox? Then they all join your Twitch team you started <laughs> earlier that we were talking about, full circle. You're a millionaire. Ferrari. Bam. So, so okay, there's a, there's a process here. So step one is Roblox. Step two is question mark. And step three is Ferrari. Ferrari every time. I think so it's just, just, just say you got sponsored by them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just show up with a whole bunch and be like, oh, yeah, you know, I had to quit the team because... Roblox is paying me all this money. Here, have a shirt on me. Even though now you're poor because you bought so much Roblox stuff. Yeah. At least you're, you can throw one shirt at ass. someone. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you just throw a shirt in someone's face and you go, I'm done with this one. I wore it once. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Just like I have 20 you of them. You pull out another one out of your Roblox <laughs> backpack that you have. Okay. You've okay. got like $30,000 in credit card debt. You got like every size shirt from the Roblox store that you can find, like a hundred of them. Don't okay. care. Okay. I want to read this to you. This is the opening paragraph from the Wikipedia for Roblox. Roblox, otherwise known as the Imagination Platform, is a massively multiplayer online game creation platform. Holy shit, what a mouthful. That allows users to design, to design their own games and play a wide variety of different types of games created by other users through Roblox Studio. But it says, and it says, the platform was officially released in September of 2006 by Roblox Corporation. As of 2017, Roblox has 64 million monthly active players. Yeah, everything what? about for Ferraris, this is according to Wikipedia, so it could be complete horse shit, but that is 64 million active monthly players. Kid, every single person making fun of you plays this game. 64 million? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Seriously, everyone you know plays Roblox. That's a fact. That's a fact. Everyone you know plays Roblox, dude. Uh, 64 million people. No That's way like... there's 64 million. Looking at the Twitch thing, it's not that popular. I don't know. <clears throat> I'd never even heard of it before are today. We guys, are we in the wrong like market segment? Do we all need to be like Roblox so content creators? How much, is, how much is Roblox? I don't know. I don't know this stuff. I, I, like, uh, I mean, it's not even on Steam. Anyways, we'll figure that out, and I think we should free. all do. If it's free, we should do a multi-stream soon. If you, I don't know. If you type it in, it's, there's a parent guide. Oh, I think you just spend money in game. Yeah, they have Robux inside of Roblox, <laughs> and they're like a, they're like coins in Hearthstone. One hundred percent. We uh, we have to do a multi-stream of this. One hundred percent. All right, dude. Yeah. So see, That's... you you answered our question of what we need to do with our lives. Let's play Roblox. I'm yeah, gonna get that no. Ferrari. I'm gonna get that Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah. Can that be the title of this episode? Roblox Ferrari. 
<laughs> Roblox, Roblox equals Ferrari. Yes, I think that should be it. Roblox equals Ferrari. Uh, yes. Rod, why don't you uh, tell us our next one, bud? Okay, so the next question is, which fictional character death affected you the most? So... It's a tough one. We're all going to probably be crying by the end of this segment. I want to Should cry, we do spoiler like, alerts? Like, for uh, some old shows and stuff? I, my suggestion is from, like, like all, like seven, eight years ago, but from... Spoiler the, alert. Yeah, but spoiler my, alert. Spoiler alert, quote. Uh, Ned Stark from Game of Thrones. That fucking sucked. Um, he gets his head cut off, and it, I was a sad panda. So, like, the whole first season of Game of Thrones is, like, is centered on this whole, like, you know, situation where this king is sick, and everyone's, like, dealing with it, and people are going out and doing stuff. And the you know, one, like, you know, like, the character who has beliefs, and he's, like, you know, I got ideals and morals... He's the only one this whole time. And then he ends up getting his head cut off. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's Stark, that's Stark. He's a pretty cool character. And that affected me. I don't know. That's the one I thought of right away when I saw this question. I, I have to ask you guys, because this is my first time using the internet. If I say spoiler alert, can I just say whatever I want? Is that how that works? Yeah. Like spoiler alert. Aliens are coming from Jupiter. Okay, cool. Perfect. What about you, Geeks? Geeks, say what's what, uh, what about you? Okay, so there's two I have in mind, okay? There's two I have in mind, and it, I'm not going to say affected me like I was crying, but just affected my world. One was, it, yeah, do you, yeah. were you guys, do you guys remember when Who Shot Mr. Burns came out? Yes, yes, I did. And they Absolutely. had, like, <laughs> no? Well, what happened was, Who Shot Mr. Burns was an episode of The Simpsons, and what happened was, it was a spoiler like or it was like a cliffhanger episode and then they ran a contest of who shot mr burns like if you got it right you got all this stuff and of course it ended up being spoiler alert maggie simpson yeah oh (laughs) but i remember like i just remember it being everywhere in the media like and there wasn't the internet right so it was all like going to the grocery store i would see magazine covers with it and stuff like that it was really intense Geek, I have to ask you though. Yeah. Did you miss the point of the question? Because Mr. Burns didn't die. And so you have completely 1000% missed the point of the question. So the other one is the person (laughs) didn't die either, but I'm telling you, you know, their fake deaths affected me the most. I don't care. I'm going with this. The second one, guys, was I used to be in wrestling. And Sting, I'm pretty sure, like, I love Sting. And he either got, like, retired or something happened to him where he kind of died or something or got really hurt. That affected me. I was sad because I love Sting. He was my favorite wrestler. That's all I got yeah. on that one. Sting, is that, like, you know, Sting at one point didn't wrestle for an entire year. He just came to shows and hung out in the rafters and, like, pointed at people with a baseball bat. He basically pulled the crow where yeah. he was just... He stole he stole the whole <laughs> identity of the crow and I loved it because I loved the crow and all that shit. He went from being like a California surfer dude yeah. into like the crow. That was like his transition in life. And then he Yeah, he went from like there. a ripoff ultimate warrior, just, uh, like yeah. surfer dude, to like I've you, got long black hair and I You guys I, are talking about this... like Sting from like the police, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the music musician Fuck cool. Perfect. Sam. The one who has sex for like three days without stopping. Uh, isn't that all wrestlers? No, no, no. I meant the the singer from the police. Yeah, so the wrestler Sting. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> imagine the wrestler Sting came out to Roxanne. <laughs> that yeah. would be boss. Okay, S- since Geek Say doesn't understand the question, Saucy, what's your answer? I think I understand the question fully. So probably the most affected <laughs> I was ever from a character death anywhere. Uh, have you guys ever played Sonic the Hedgehog? Yep. Have you heard of it? Yep. It's I, a I, I, pretty pretty yes. new game. Came out for the Sega Genesis. We um, just got it. We just so, got it here in Canada. It's hot. Yeah, I figured, Sega I didn't know here. if you guys had got gotten the, the Sega the, Genesis the, yet or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, first level of Sonic the Hedgehog, Green Hill Zone. When you get to, spoiler alert, sorry guys. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> at the end of Act 3, you fight Dr. Robotnik. He's got a swinging ball. So when Sonic dies to that swinging ball at the start, it, it, it wrecked my world, guys. It wrecked my world. I, I had to tell you, Saucy, you can hit the start button and try again. What? You know, 
Yeah. I thought you had to buy a new copy of the game. Nope. Shit, I've spent a lot of money on Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> I have 25 copies. You're like the Roblox guy of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah, dude. I just, <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, got to rack up some more credit card debt. Do you think I could sell all these cards? Behind, behind my, <laughs> my lab that I'm in here, I just have a stack of cartridges. Think I could sell those back? They're still good? He he could actually make the second E.T. pit, the the, the famed E.T. buried collection of the Atari game, but with Sonic the Hedgehog. Saucy Mailman has 732,000 copies of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and I want you to do the math on that. That's a lot of internet uh, credit card debt that he That's has. $35. I just did the math. I crunched was the numbers. It, was it Sega Game Gear? Was it the Game Gear? Se- Sega yeah, that Gear. had like... It had like 200 double a batteries on the back yeah of it. Did you, you did you guys play it because I, I remember so my parents had um used to have another house that they'd rent out and they were tearing it down and they found a sega game gear from the old uh people that used to live there and they gave it to me and it had sega and i was pumped yeah. it took i think six it took six double a batteries and it would last lot. it would last no lie probably 45 minutes to an hour yeah maybe an hour they were it, terrible it didn't last very long. All the games were pretty garbage. I had one when I was a kid, and it was because we could never have like the real things. So we got like a Game Gear because it was on sale at whatever department store my mom took us to. And Sears? so it was Sears. I don't know what the hell it was. Oh, I, didn't, but... I didn't know. I thought you guys didn't have Sears. Okay, go on. Yeah. Dude, no, just... Sonic, Sonic on Game Gear was awesome, though. You just have to have like a, a full like lifetime supply of batteries to get through the game. <laughs> I I'm impressed so much nowadays because we have all this technology that like will last forever without being charged and like growing up and like using like 25 D packs like the like D batteries to use this stuff and it's just so much better like the, even the Nintendo Switch will like run around and be used like for longer points of time than that Game Gear ever did and that's all like you know internal charged batteries so. It looks like I can sell these copies of Sonic the Hedgehog for about five to ten dollars each on eBay. <laughs> I mean, you you paid sixty for them a piece, so it it's, did. It sounds like good math to me. Yeah. So you're getting your could, money back. If we if we if we calculate for inflation, I made money. All right. Next question. <laughs> Saucy, why don't you say the last question we got here, bud? All right. This should be. This is probably going to be a very uh, deep philosophical conversation we have. This question comes to us. It is. Well, we we found it, but we're going to pretend it came to us. Uh, so this question is: Is Fortnite the best game in the world? So I'm going to start this. I don't know a lot about Fortnite other than it's a game online. But what I do know about Fortnite is their YouTube like ads come on every 18 seconds when I'm watching a YouTube video. And the volume of it is at least 4,000 times louder than the video I'm watching. So no, Fortnite is not the best game in the world. <laughs> you know, that's always fun. It's a fun user experience when the volume levels of your entertainment products change rapidly. And so when my ears get blown out by like such things, it, it makes me happy as a consumer. So are you going to say it is the best game in the world? Oh, it's the best thing ever. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I, I would like to read you um, someone's reply here. This, I think, sums it up on my feelings. Nah, man. If you think that, you've clearly never felt the triumph and adrenaline Dead Space 2 can make you feel. <laughs> or the sense of freedom that comes with the parkour in Assassin's Creed game. Those are good games. They make you feel invincible. Fortnite is nothing in comparison. Even Skyrim uh. is superior. You can easily get dozens of hours out of it. Dozens of hours. Dozens of hours. Much, much more than Fortnite. Branch out and try some new games. You'll love them. If you're, you'll love them if you're actually that easily impressed. <laughs> Dang, you gotta, you gotta end your response with a zing there. Ding, 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 okay, ding. so I, I, there's okay, so there's more hours technically though in Fortnite than any of these games, even Skyrim, because it is an endless BR, mm-hmm. so you can play it forever. But I don't know if my the triumph and adrenaline from Dead Space 2 would even compare to Fortnite, right? Like, I remember playing Dead Space 2. Good game, but I'm, I'm not like, the triumph and adrenaline of Dead Space 2. <laughs> so, 
this is just a pr- a, a fine point of no game is ever going to be the best game in the world for everyone, right? Everyone has their own thing. 12-year-olds love Fortnite. And a proven point that if you are 12, there is a 60% chance that 100% of the time you love Fortnite. But everyone likes different kinds of video games, right, man? It's If you like Dead Space 2 and the thrill and the adrenaline of Dead Space 2... I like adrenaline. Well, more power to you. I <laughs> parkour, mean, that's, I love. I mean, that's you parkour around Canada, right? I mean, you no, parkour. I think... <laughs> yeah, we just got it too. <laughs> I was gonna, did you just get that? Okay, cool. So, because uh, I was gonna say, have you? Do you understand the references? I don't know if those games have come yet to where you live. <laughs> parkour. No, Assassin's Creed One uh, just came out about a few months ago, and it, it's hot. Okay. It's hot. Right. But like, so here's how I feel about this, guys. This whole question, right? It's just the hotness right now. In two years, people are still going to play. It's still going to be popular, but it's not going to be the hotness. I remember in my era, Halo was the big thing. Everyone loved Halo. I loved Halo. Everyone went nuts for Halo. And it, it even brought like esports into the forefront. You know, it's it's just and now Halo. Look how many people play Halo. Like no one. Seven, seven, seven yeah. people play Halo. Yeah, I Halo think it is seven. I think I love that game. I don't care. I'll still play it. So there's uh, you and six other people that yeah. play Halo. Yeah. It's pretty much me so, and alt accounts. So I, I think we can all agree to answer your question. No, Fortnite is not the best game in the world. But I think I have the answer to your question because we we this is the, like what the best game in the world would be. So there's this game that came out for Sega Genesis called Sonic the Hedgehog. I've got some eBay listings up if you don't have a copy of the game. So uh, you can get a copy of it. They're uh, $14 for you. So uh, pick it up. Best game in the world. And you better come and buy it now because there are like l- l- loan guys who are coming for Saucy to break his kneecap. Yeah. If they, if you don't, if Saucy doesn't pay these guys back, they will break his knees. So yeah. please buy Sonic the Hedgehog just, from Saucy. I, I just want to respond with a couple of these responses. No, Doom is a ten times better shooting game. Fortnite will never be as good as any of the Doom games. Doom, GoldenEye, and Half Life are the only fun shooting games. I think GoldenEye was my favorite of the Doom franchise games. <laughs> <laughs> So good. <laughs> so good. Did you, guys, did you guys ever play the Nintendo 64 South Park shooter game where you like ran, run around and like fighting no. turkeys and throwing snowballs and it was amazing. <laughs> that sounds amazing. That does sound so good. Bad. It was so That was bad. also in the Doom franchise series. It was. It, it was basically just Doom with, with South Park characters, so <laughs> so good. So we I don't think we'll like we're hoping not to do have to find questions next week right yeah yeah it's i i hope that we have 700 million downloads and we are the most famous people in the world by this time next week but we may have to do this just because people may be embarrassed because we're so popular you don't have to put your name on there you could give us ridiculous questions and we will answer them without your name we promise yes we'll help you get your own roblox ferrari I mean, Roblox Ferrari is the only way to live life. Remember that. That's hot. So. Yep. That's hot. So we uh, um, we have, the, at the end of each uh, episode, we want to give you, because we're going to help you all become famous and rich apparently now. Um, yep. We want to give you some stuff you can do with all this money. So we have this segment here. We're going to give you guys some great things that you can purchase from Why I Am Broke. So why I am broke this month, I have subscribed to this peanut butter and jelly of the month club. Um, It is $468 for a 12 month subscription, but every month they send you some gourmet peanut butter and jelly. What do you guys think of that? I, I feel like this whole situation should be like, you better be sending me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich like made if I'm giving you $468. It's real good. And, no, and, and well, it's six hundred eighty-six dollars Canadian, right? Like it's almost seven hundred dollars so Canadian. So that's no. like twenty dollars US. Yeah. No, man, on Amazon it's four hundred sixty-eight dollars. So that's American yeah. dollars. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, like sorry. that's like a thousand Canadian dollars. No, it's it's <laughs> technically it says here six hundred and eighty-six. Yeah. I don't know why, but okay. So let, let's think about that. 
okay so it's roughly like you know 35 40 dollars for this peanut butter and jelly every month it's not bad <laughs> i pay that for <laughs> not bad that's a steal that's yep. a steal in my book yep so I everyone just, go and subscribe to the $468 pe gourmet peanut butter and jelly of the month club. That's where I'm putting my money. This is my favorite, this review. Bought this for my husband, the man who has everything, or buys it himself if he wants something. He said this was the best gift ever. It is so much fun getting a present each month. And how can you go wrong with peanut butter and jelly? Well, I want to introduce this woman into so many different worlds where if this is her exciting, like, you can't beat this thing, I, I just, I feel so sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that review was written by me. Uh, so. Oh, I mean, you are B.A. Ba Cox. I mean, yeah. B.A. Cox. So. Yeah. That <laughs> <Badass> is Cox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I want to say thank you, everyone, for being a part of our first episode of Geek Aid. Um, I want you all to write in questions. So if you have questions, whatever they are, if you need advice, if you have questions in general, just whatever nerdy, geeky stuff you want to ask us. Remember, we are experts. We know everything. So just write them in. We'll have good answers for you. Um, should we just have you guys just uh, email the Gmail account? or? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's just geekaidpodcast at gmail.com. Send those in here. Um, but yeah, you guys want to end this thing? Yeah, so Rod, we can go eat our peanut you... butter and jelly? <laughs> I mean, Rod, I, I spent by? $468. I can't afford any other food for the rest of the year. So yeah, I better go have some peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. So who are you? Where can people find you? <laughs> I am Rod underscore Johnston on Twitter. And you can find me on Twitch at Rod underscore Johnston. What about you, Geeks A? Uh, I'm Geeks A on Twitch. I'm Geek Say on YouTube. I'm Geek Say on Instagram. And if you need me also on Twitter, I'm Geek Say, but with an extra H. It's really annoying, but it happens. We're trying to we're trying to kneecap the guy who has the original oh my account. Oh god, do I ever want to? <laughs> so I'm, I'm Saucy Mailman. You can find me just at Saucy Mailman on Twitch and on Twitter and everywhere. Or you can find me in my garage polishing my Roblox Ferrari. <laughs> Uh, you can find this. Uh, just we're Geek Aid Podcast on Twitter. Um, our YouTube yep. has a stupid link name because we need more subscribers because this is the first day we've done this. So you'll find us somewhere. Um, but yeah, what else do you guys have to say? Anything cool? I think I'm good. I'm great. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys send questions. That's what one thing I want. I want some fun questions. So <laughs> throw some at us. Have some fun with it. And if you don't want your name said out loud, we don't have to say it. Yeah, yep. you can just make up a cool name too. Yeah. Like oh, Steve cool names. Roblox McFarry. <laughs> Mc, Mc, or like what Brad James. This, what happens if this just turns into like a Roblox podcast? Like somehow it's just like all about <laughs> Roblox and then everything hey. transitions to us being like based on Roblox. 64 million people. 64 active. million people, yeah. 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 If we get 64 million downloads of a uh, freaking week, I think we're going to be doing just fine. <laughs> A doll, and, and if they all give us a dollar, we'll all have our own Roblox Ferraris. Yep. Thanks, guys, so much. You're all the best. I hope Thanks, you have a good guys. week. See ya. Bye.